Welcome back. Now, education lies at a peculiar crossroad in society. On one hand, it has the responsibility of anticipating real-life skills by preparing us for an increasingly complex world. But education methodologies can only be formalized after practices have been defined. In Nigeria, where our teaching techniques, especially uh, in our government schools, are really outdated, we ask how can we integrate to the new realities where education becomes a continuous interconnected effort, allowing students to cope with a perpetually changing world. Now we have with us the Lagos State Commissioner of Education, Falashade Adefisayo, joining us via Skype. Now remember you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Good evening. Honorable Commissioner, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so we'll just go right into the conversation. Um, COVID-19 is here, and the lockdown has forced a lot of things, you know, to, ch to, to start to change, especially in our educational sector, in all sectors, in fact. Um, and we've been watching and seeing all the good works you've been doing, you know, introducing learning via radio and television. So we are asking generally, since the lockdown started, first of all, what has been the success rate of reaching your students via those channels? Well, uh, we, we have been collecting data analytics. They're obviously difficult to collect data in Nigeria. But uh, it, it, uh, we think that we've been able to get uh, a wide swathe of uh, students in school. And it's not just our own schools, but also private schools across the country, even up to Abuja, are tuning into the station, asking questions and uh, coordinating with their teachers. And, you know, we are not stopping the whole thing with the online discussion. Our own teachers have set up WhatsApp platforms for those who have WhatsApp. They've set up WhatsApp platforms for them so that they can further discuss whatever was discussed on radio. So it, 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 there's a lot of activity going on, and we are reasonably certain that many... Of course, there are still some children who do not have access to radio, and we are, we are working on getting small transistor radios available for all of them. Okay, fantastic. As many of them as we can. Yeah. So what is your, because for every um, implementation, there should be parameters for success. What are your parameters to say, okay, this project is a success and we are meeting our target? And how do you get that feedback? Like I said, there is a company that is collecting data analytics in the background. And what we've asked them to collect data on is how many people, when the, the TV is on, how many people are sending messages, how many... Uh, people are calling in when we have calling, because we do have calling uh, sessions as well. Then what's the coverage? Where are people calling from? And uh, which schools are people calling from? So this is some of the data that we are collecting. Okay, okay. It's, uh, it's a pleasure talking to you, Ma. Um, my name is Isio Fadile. I'm an educator as well. So education for all is, um, is supposed to be every child should have access to education. So, uh, irrespective of the status, tribe, or location, how realistic is this po um, during COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 period? Well, during COVID-19, obviously very challenging, but uh, I don't believe it's not doable because uh, we've learned that uh, majority of our students, for instance, we collected enough data to know that uh, access to internet is very, very low. And that's why we went for radio and uh, with, with television there, of course. Then we found out again that there are quite a number uh, of them who don't have uh, radios. And so again, we are going to cover up that, that but by looking for devices, uh, radios for, for, for as many students as we can. And uh, this is with the help of the public. It's not, uh, you know. And so 
during this COVID period, I believe that we can do a lot. And my ex and I will tell you, this is a terrible thing to happen. It's very challenging. And nobody alive today can recollect life ever being like this. But what I know and believe is that out of the ashes of all this, I certainly believe that a phoenix will arise. I know that means that renewed, transformed, energized, that our educational system is going to change radically because it cannot be business as usual. And exactly. we cannot stop the radio transfers, or we, um, radio programs or television programs. Neither would we like to stop, would we want to stop uh, the momentum of a lot of schools doing online teaching. We ourselves are, are working on doing online teaching. We are getting devices for our students. We already have a website that we can that uh, has the Nigerian curriculum uh, downloaded on so that uh, it can reinforce the learning we are doing, uh, yeah. the, the learning in class. We'll have the WhatsApp and so So it clearly, it cannot be business as usual. And they, they will be able to reach more and more students. If we continue on radio, for instance, out of school children will be able to um, join, we will be able to join via radio. Like and we can work with communities to put out sp speakers. And so it's a lot that we can do post COVID. Okay, I like the fact that you said something about the curriculum. Now, how. Is there anything in place to actually change the curriculum? Because we've been using the curriculum of um, yesteryears from um, 20, 20, um, 2004, which was actually revised in 2013. So um, what do you think can be done to change the national policy of edu on education currently? Because it is essential that we change the curriculum to infuse um, um, resilience, adaptability, ed edu um, entrepreneurship, and other skills that is, is, that is accepted in today's society. Oh, okay, I think I would add to what Isi is saying. 65% of today's grade school children will okay. end up at jobs that haven't been invented yet. Exactly. So are we preparing our children for tomorrow, or we are preparing our children for yesterday? That's an excellent question. And, uh, well, I, I would still question if 2013 is yesteryears. But uh, I guess uh, to a very young person, 2013 must be yesteryears. Well, it's about six years ago. So the curriculum was reviewed in 2013. And uh, right now in Lagos State, we've been working on the curriculum. Uh, I personally, before I became a commissioner, I was a facilitator with... Uh, uh, with, uh, what can I call it, uh, a, an uh, overseas organization, and our focus was actually on how to integrate the core skills in the classroom. So I was always involved in, and when we talk about the core skills, we're talking about critical thinking, problem solving, creativity and innovation. We're talking about entrepreneurship, student leadership, you know, digital literacy. How do you infuse and integrate all these in the curriculum? Definitely they are not subjects, and you cannot treat them as subjects. And uh, so I think I have a fair bit of experience on how to integrate. They are not subjects. What you have to do is, whether you are teaching physics or you are teaching math or you are teaching English, how do you integrate these core skills? And it affects how you assess learning is taking place. So this is something that I brought into Lagos State with a lot of enthusiasm. And our curriculum department has been working on the curriculum updating you know we, we've done a lot of work we've gone for a lot of training we've had people come to talk to us we've worked with a number of private schools as well and uh, but, but you know this whole thing has slowed us down but I, i'm reasonably certain that uh, when we open we'll be able to uh, upgrade our curriculum and you also know that um, but there's a big part of it that i'm a bit concerned with that that is assessment of learning or assessment for learning either uh, you know both 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 ways of assessing that learning has taken place uh, because of the gateway exams hmm? those gateway exams the the, the WAEC and NECO is really very difficult to you whatever you do you have to remember that the questions asked there tend to be lower order uh, uh, questions on 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 the Bloom, Bloom's taxonomy. So we are trying to see how we can. Overhaul. I'm hoping that we will get Wyek to also work with Overhaul, us. Overhaul, yeah. If Wyek doesn't change the way they ask questions, we will have to go for Wyek because it's a gateway. Like I tell my students, you don't pass Wyek, you don't move forward. And if that gate is locked against you, it, it's a terrible thing indeed. Okay. And so we, we have to all work together, not just ministries of education. All right. So uh, just to get you clear, because when, the, when this lockdown happened and you announced radio and television, 
I felt maybe this was a bit, you know, backward, but I didn't put in consideration the, the larger population that do not have access to smartphones and all of that. Is there any, a, any apart from um, Microsoft that you're partnering with, are you planning to partner with pop, uh, private schools that are getting it right for this online training? Or you're going to just partner with um, maybe the Microsoft like we read on, in the news? If we partner with them, you see, the website is not a problem. We have a website. We have our subjects on the Nigerian curriculum, like I said, on the internet and so on. But to access the internet, you need some things. You need data and you need um, devices. I told you that a significant proportion of our students do not even have access to radio. You know, you, you know, you have to think about your school with the children who can afford this. They can have laptops and tablets. You are talking about somebody who cannot afford a 1,000 Naira transistor radio. Wow. Exactly. How is that person going to, if the schools have got it right, one of the reasons why they've got it right is because of the fact that, that their students can afford these devices. Exactly. Wow. So do we have so, like so a five-year plan? Pardon? Do we have a, a not like a five-year plan for where we're going? Do we have a blueprint for where we're going in Lagos State in terms of education? And where can oh, we yeah. see that? Oh, yes, we are working with an organization uh, called Roadgate. And what we've done with them is that, that they are the ones, you know, it's on their website, their platform. We want to work with them, their digital platform. And we have devices. We are trying to now source for devices. And that's no, you, you know that that's the main cost uh, of, course, uh, yeah. of, of everything. And, and, one, and some banks, especially First Bank, have come to us. They've given us about 20,000 pieces. And we're also calling on other people to support us so that our students will have access to these devices and be able to take them home. And our teachers as well. And be able to take them home, work on them. You know, the, the devices already have the Nigerian curriculum on them. You have tests, you have quizzes. They can go into a chat room and discuss with their teachers. This is the kind of learning that we want hmm. with our whole heart. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that our students do not have devices. And we are trying to get devices. So we are working on it, and we call again on people who would be willing to support us. It's not, we too are going to uh, buy the devices. We, I mean, we have to put it in our budget, and we are going to work on it. But uh, if people can support us, it would be great. Okay. That, that so, much I can say. Okay, Ma. One more thing. According to UNICEF, the, the number of children under 14 years in Nigeria is estimated at 42.2 million, which includes mm. 10.5 million out of school. Now, with this pandemic, don't you think the statistics of those that will be out of school will be more? Of course. It goes without saying. Because uh, poverty has deepened in many areas. And the reasons why children drop out, uh, in, uh, of course, one of, one of the major reasons is poverty. The need to earn an income. They need to bring money into the family, uh, you know. So uh, they need to even marry off young girls so that at least they one less mouth to feed. So all the issues that deepen poverty, I think, might deepen at this time. It's not that we won't recover; we will. So I, I, I know that when we open, most likely we will have even more children out of school. And so to plan for them, that's why we said we don't want to stop the radio. We are, I, I, I can't be telling you all the things that we are doing, uh, but we are going to start, oh, we are planning to broadcast 24-7 on radio because, and, and to work with NGOs in communities so, and community leaders as well. Because even now as we are talking, I have people who have put loudspeakers in front of their houses hmm. so that when the radio is working, their neighbors can listen. Can hear. Wow. Okay. But Thank you know, at this time, because of social distance, we cannot tell children to go to such to go to a collection point. But if social distance ends, we'll be able to have community centers where we'll that all these are things that we're thinking about and planning towards. And that's why I said we plan to broadcast 24-7. Ma how we are going to do that is challenging, but it's doable again. Okay, so one has asked a question on WhatsApp. What change should we anticipate in our educational system? Oh, definitely, we are going to have a change in, in delivery. Um, I'm someone who believes that, um, and, and from my own studies as an educationist, I found that, and, and I've seen that nothing beats uh, quality of teaching and learning. You can 
invest in any other inputs and resources if you do not invest in that in in that incredible transaction between the teacher and the pupil of the student in class then you are just wasting money okay, and so i so i think what is going to change what has changed from all this is how people have had to teach online. When we started, the even the radio sessions, don't forget, is also a way of digital distance learning. Yeah. So some of the skills that you use to train online, you are using on radio as well. It looked impossible and people were shocked. Why would you do this? Let them sit at home, you know? Uh, well, you, you know, how can we afford this? This cannot happen. Teachers will get tired. But let me tell you, the teachers are enthusiastic because they are learning new skills, digital skills. They are learning new ways of delivering. They are learning to engage learners. You cannot engage learners by just sitting there and woodenly lecturing. Exactly. You have to start to think about how to make your class more engaging Pretty. for learners. You have to use the multiple instructional strategies in class to, to instruct and multiple assessment methods. So I think this is all going to change. First of all, the most critical part of education, which is teaching and learning, I think it's going to change, change the way the teachers practice their craft. Okay, it's so just that for us not to forget and continue to reinforce it. That's all. All right, so we have two that more questions. Someone has asked, Uti has asked from um, way she said, when we talk about education, we can see the impact of uneducation in the youth of today. What is the plan for children currently not in school and how can unconventional education be used to reach these children? And someone else is asking, can we incorporate STEM, that science, technology, engineering, art, and math into our curriculum from as early as three years old? Is, is that planning? In fact, you know, I told you we were, let me answer the... Let me answer. Please don't ask me too many questions. <laughs> Sorry, no. We are just running. Please. So the, the first one talks about the please, plans please tell in me place. The first one again. The plans uh, in sorry. place for the children. What is the plan in place for the children that are out of school? No, remember what I said about the fact that we want to start engaging them in learning through radio. Okay, so we're going to keep. We're going to maintain and that. that yeah, we're going to also, you know, there are many things we are thinking about, learning packets, that is, we'll print packets and take them to, we have to work with communities. Okay. And so what's the best way to engage? But the first thing that I wanted to do when I came in as commissioner in August was to find out how many out-of-school children are in Lagos. This 13.5 million you are talking about, obviously they are not in Lagos. Wow. So <laughs> they are not all in Lagos, but how many do we actually have in Lagos? How can we count them? How, where are they? Why have they left school? Because some of them have never been in school. Some of them dropped out of school. Attrition is very high at secondary level. Exactly. Again, why didn't they go from primary to secondary? Why didn't they go from junior secondary to senior secondary? Why didn't they sit for why? So these are all the things that we were also working on. We got an NGO that was ready to work with us to start to collect data on out of school children. But we know that we have them and we are planning to use radio and other methods to reach them. I can, I can feel your passion right here in the studio. But one final question. Do we see an end to all those children that we see on the streets? Is Lagos State seriously working to get them off the streets to be in school? Just a yes or yeah, a no. That, that, you know, that, 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 that is why we are doing something with our school children. We are also, though we haven't approved it yet, and we are thinking about Edu Marshalls, which they have in some states, that is people who just go round and round and uh, pick up children who are, trade, who are trading during school hours. Right. So we are, we are also talking to an organization that wants to join us to do that. So there are so many initiatives. I hope I, in this short period, we I'll are let really you know the complexity. We will bring you, we will bring you <laughs> at, I mean, live in the studio to do a full one hour with us because we really want to see the plan of thank Lagos you. State. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us this evening. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this. We really love it and day. we enjoy talking to you because you're very passionate about education, we can see. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm frustrated too wow. because no not frustrated because i can't do anything frustrated because we people who are elite how can you think you know people fought me and hey, this day of the internet why are you using radio I was that means that many of us are disengaged listen to me disengaged from the grassroots we don't know what is happening we think every child is like our own child who wakes up in the morning, has sausage, conflicts, scrambled egg, goes to school in a nice car, has a laptop at his or her disposal no majority don't <laughs> wake up and don't even have anything to eat wow. and wow. get to school and and, and 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 don't have any devices or anything 
Wow. Oh, I, I, I just want the uh, people who are, I don't want to say elite, the people who are more prosperous to try and understand and support the issues. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We would love to have you again. I hope you'll come. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. That I was could interesting. feel her passion. That was so interesting. I even had more questions. You were just, ask. you know. Because uh, <laughs> no, but it's, it's every it's day you get to talk how... to her and tell, ask her. I need, I need to ask her some more questions. No, but you, you know? see, I, I can feel that even at this point, she is truly overwhelmed, you know. And you know, truly, I was living well. in my own world when I was saying this present age of technology, blah, blah, mm. blah. Truth is, some people can't even afford radio. Exactly. And some wow. people can't even afford to buy a phone, not to talk of have internet. All right, so we'll go on a quick break and we'll talk to our next guest. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Oh.